hey Carlos, so tell me, how did you get started with Chat GPT? I mean, is it, yeah. is it like what isn't like a, a, a like a fly by night thing that's gonna like die out pretty soon? Yeah, solid question, man. I mean, I've been in marketing and copywriting for uh, almost two decades now, I suppose, and and it's something that when you're using Chat GPT or any AI technology, the way I like to use it is a is a big time saver. I almost look at them like little marketing assistants because instead of, for example, as a copywriter, one of the things I have to do is I have to go research a product, research uh, the benefits of the product, do a lot of freaking research. But what Chat GPT allows me to do is allows me to literally type in exactly what I need, like I'm putting in an order, and then it spits out the exact answer. And then I can even tell it, hey, expand on that answer and give me examples and give me stories about it and really go into detail. And before I know it, I go from just researching and not really having an idea of what I'm going to write to having Chat GPT act as if it's my junior copywriter or marketing assistant. So it's doing the hard work of finding the stuff I need. It's a expanding on all the topics I'm telling it to expand on. And it's crafting about 80 to 90% of the usable copy I'm actually going to put out in the marketplace. My job as a copywriter now is to add some of the persuasive elements, make it slightly more conversational, maybe add little tidbits here and there. But I got involved with ChatGPT because I saw so many people who were using it and seeing results. And I was like, man, this thing literally just came out. It's growing like, I don't know how many millions per day or per week or month, but there's a ton of people that are joining chat GPT. I don't think it's a fad. I don't think it's going to leave. I think there's a couple people in this camp. You have the folks who, when the internet, for example, first came out, you had the people who were like diehard believers. This is the internet. It's not going away. It's really good. But then you had some of the others, the, the folks who were a bit more skeptical. And although it was growing very quickly and maybe obvious to some people, there were other folks who were like, this internet thing is a fad. And there was articles published in big major newspapers that were saying, you know, people think the internet's going to be around in 20 years. It probably won't last another six months or something, right? And they had all of this doom and gloom stuff. And I think we're at that phase right now with chat GPT, almost as if it's like a new internet revolution. And so it's really cool to be a part of that. And if anyone here is like a marketer or a copywriter or a business person, you're doing yourself a disservice by not evolving with the times. It's like saying during when the internet first came out, you know what? I know I'm growing my business now and this internet thing might be able to help me, but I'm just going to completely ignore it. And then 20 years later, 10 years later, five years later, those businesses that didn't evolve and didn't adapt got left behind in the dust. And most of those people now had to go get jobs somewhere else. So to avoid that, I always encourage people, when you see new tech coming out, and if it's being adopted into as fast as it is, where I forget the actual number, but there's literally millions of people per day joining chat GPT. And in a world where there's only a few billion people, we're going to have the entire world on chat GPT in like a year or less, I think. So do yourself a favor. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur of any kind, use chat GPT for research, for marketing, for unlimited assistance, and just get your, get your business moving forward faster. Hey, Carlos, that was great. I have one last question for you and I'm going to let you go. Sure. All right. Give me one of your favorite uses of chat GPT. One of your favorite. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it, it's definitely not just one, but I'll give you just one. So, uh, one yeah, of just one. I, yeah. One of the things I do as a copywriter and marketer again is I research, right? And so one of the things I'll do is I try to borrow credibility from celebrities and people who have a lot of notoriety and try to borrow that and attach it to a product that we're promoting. So for example, one of the products that I just started promoting for a client of mine is it's like a it's an ebook and a course and, and meal plan, all this stuff on how to do the keto diet. Now, this is a new course. They didn't have a bunch of testimonials. They don't have a celebrity endorsing it. So how do we market it? Well, what I ended up doing is I said, let's borrow credibility from someone who's already using the keto diet. And then at the end of our little sales pitch or say our article, we'll say, if you want to learn more about the keto diet, click here. But we'll have grabbed their attention by borrowing the credibilities or but the, the celebrities' credibility. So I went into chat GPT and I said uh, uh, something along the lines of, Find me all of the celeb or give me a list of celebrities that are using the keto diet. Uh, and that's it. And then it gave me a bunch of different celebrities. Uh, Halle Berry was the one we ended up using, but Halle Berry was one of them. Um, Tim Tebow is another one. Uh, there, there's a whole bunch of these people. And so what we did is 
uh, and you know one of my favorite headlines, The Dirty Little Secret. So we had a headline that said, discover Halle Berry's dirty little weight loss secret she doesn't want you to know about, right? And now we're writing an article about truth, facts, Halle Berry using the keto diet to actually get results. And then at the end, I say, now, if you thought, uh, and if you want to start uh, getting results with the keto diet, just go here to get this free ebook or whatever it was. And so now we've talked about Halle Berry, borrowed her credibility, got a bunch of clicks over to that article. And then at the bottom, we have a very subtle pitch that says to basically learn more about keto in general, go click over here. And what's really cool about this is, and I actually just, I, I, that's how I had used it for this specific article. What I realized today is I could, in fact, I could literally tell ChatGPT, now write me an article about Halle Berry using the keto diet, and it'll actually write the full thing for me. And then I'll even tell it, now write this in a conversational tone, use contractions and write it at a fifth grade reading level. And it will do that. And so it'll take the article, the, I, the Halle Berry idea that I asked it to give me, then I said, write an article for me. It writes that article. Then I say, basically, make it more conversational and readable, conversational and readable. And it does that too. So that's, I mean, I could go into tons of details on why I love ChatGPT. But if I had to just pick one, it's that ability right there. You have everything at your fingertips and you've got the best marketing assistant you could ever have. If you like this interview, we have more resources down below in the description. Make sure to check them out. Thank you, Carlos, for that super informative interview. And we look forward to hearing from you and other parts that we want to do if you in the future. I hope to have you back. Thanks a lot for being here.